Hi, Mark Montgomery, K. Yield. Want to share some thoughts on this Memorial Day weekend. Been reflecting on uh, our work in AI systems at risk. Uh, and I think it's fitting because uh, for me personally, uh, I can bring it full circle. I grew up in a military family. and I was just thinking yesterday about some of the some of the families that lost parents uh, we went to school with back in the, I was in grade school during the Vietnam War in the late 1960s when the, uh, the missiles uh, be, became uh, common, scaled out in the Vietnam War. And my dad was a fighter pilot earlier that moved on to VIPs, but uh, a lot of the, the squadrons and people I went to school with uh, were, were called over to Vietnam and, and, uh, and a lot of them were killed or injured during a fairly short period of time. Uh, we were fortunate that by that time my dad was in uh, VIPs, and and so he went he went to he had to go back to to Vietnam. We came back to the states, but uh, but he was flying the ambassador, so his his job then was to keep out of harm's way and not to get in it, which in some ways was actually more difficult for him because he was by nature a fighter pilot and had to sort of sit on the sidelines. So I was thinking about all that and the personal issues, but. Uh, but I wanted to focus on uh, communications with the DOD and our work. I feel pretty good about it and our contributions. Um, the incumbency problem situation that the United States is, is facing now with AI systems uh, it applies to a lot of the corporations that we've dealt with over the past few years in AI systems. Um, and so we, if we can just zoom in on that a little bit, it may help. I want to focus on two areas, but before that, understand the broader uh, challenges uh, that are the DOD is facing. For example, it's a it's, it's U.S. wide, but to, just to revert back to an article I wrote, I have an op-ed that didn't get published this week, and I was hoping it would. And the major media it doesn't look like it it, it will uh, in time, anyhow. Um, but uh, the, the U.S. is facing an incumbency problem. The DOD uh, specifically was not moving very fast. A lot of projects spread across the DOD that are class, you know, classified as AI systems, uh, machine learning, et cetera. A lot of good work, apparently, in all these different areas. But no cohesive strategy is in a unified manner across the entire DOD, um, specific to artificial intelligence. So now there's talk about creating an AI center and, and developing a cohesive strategy. Um, there's a couple of warnings, too, about that. A uh, lot of good work, a lot of bad work going on right now, but one of the good, good pieces of work, and McKinsey has been looking at this, and often find things in, in agreement with McKinsey, uh, and just recently published a, a piece on uh, the need for speed in AI systems. Well, you, you won't hear anybody that, that agrees with that more. I push that a lot, have been, uh, for competitive reasons. But nothing to do with us, but for the customer, uh, the need for speed and competitiveness is very important. Uh, with the U.S., it's related to China, but in, uh, in, in grocery stores, it could be Amazon or it could be whoever. Uh, competitors, adversaries are moving very rapidly. Uh, they don't have the problems that a, a company has, legacy systems have. They don't have the regulatory barriers, the problems, the cultural issues, uh, some cases financial issues. So uh, it very much applies. But uh, Eric Schmidt, uh, Congress, uh, is a chairman of the Innovation Committee. Uh, just recently, a couple I wrote about it and shared a video on it. Uh, it something that we all share that have been close to this over the years. Uh, and he said that uh, the DOD doesn't have an innovation problem. It has an adoption problem. Well, I can say that in, in terms of AI system, the United States has an adoption problem. The way we're adopting our acquisition methods are broken. Um, our legacy issues are a problem relative to this technology, and also how fast uh, the competition is moving, how evolutionary uh, this, the, the scale and the, um, the, the quick evolution of improvement in especially machine learning is new. That's an entirely new situation um, in AI systems that no one has ever dealt with before in the history of human race. So this is this is very important to get right. So the need for speed, the big, big warning on that is, is if you're going in the wrong direction fast, 
you're going to fail fast and not in the good way that is often re referenced that we were doing back in our lean KS lab in the 1990s where K yield was conceived. But you're going to go off a cliff. We're already seeing that now. We're already seeing that in corporations that went very fast, very big, spent a lot of money in the wrong direction. Um, this is one of those situations where the pioneers that have been working in this area for decades are literally invaluable. And that's why there's a talent war. Now, I'm not a specialist in algorithms, and that's where a lot of the noise is about uh, you know, talent. It's, it's valid. Uh, there, there were very few people around that were working on. Uh, the budgets were cut back. Uh, pioneers did a few breakthroughs. We're talking about very few people in the whole world uh, that were really leaders and pioneers in AI systems and algorithms. They're generally running the corporate labs and professors uh, today. In our lab, there were we, our KS labs, independent, self-funded. Uh, there's only a handful of universities working in this area. My specialty, k -Yield specialty, we apply those uh, specialty algorithmics, and I have to stay on top of them and test them and understand them. Um, and it's moving very rapidly. So thousands of papers uh, over the years. But our specialty is in the network-wide distributed network. How does the system come together and work together to optimize certain things? And designed in from the beginning, governance and security. How do you achieve optimal performance, productivity? It's very similar. There's thousands of issues. In fact, there may be more issues to understand in a system-wide, uh, broad system. Um, drilling down as, as, as deep as you need to go on algorithmics than in just studying the math and, and specific algorithms. Um, in any event, both are complex. The pioneering and the decades of work are critical. If you don't have that working for you, the reason why there's this talent war, the reasons why companies that are, are really the top tier in understanding this uh, have paid a very high price for some of those companies with that talent um, is because it's one, very rare, and two, it's extremely important and valuable today. And that is not just in terms of financial uh, and economic terms, but for the U.S., for example, and competitiveness um, and potentially existential risk. So that's a message that we're getting across to U.S. leaders uh, over the past year especially. Um, good news now, we seem to be going in the right direction. There's a sense of urgency now, of course, I want to see the executed well, um, but I feel good about our contributions in that. Um, so there's, that's the first issue, though. Really need to work with pioneers that understand this. A lot of folks out there that are claiming it because there's a lot of money in it now. There's, uh, when we started, there was no money in it. Uh, we were, self, were still self-funded. Uh, so we weren't in it for the money. Uh, we need to get paid for our work. But uh, we're trying to solve really big problems. And I can say that from the work that I've studied of the scientists in this area, that's something they pretty much all share. I, I, I really, it really is a, a, a phenomenal group, but haven't spent a lot of time personally with them. I don't go to the conferences. We're not a monopoly. We can't share our R&D. Ours is classified as trade secrets for the most part. And the way our laws are, is that you can't share trade secrets or you'll lose them um, in the United States. And um, since we don't have monopoly power, uh, what, what happens if we share our trade secrets? Somebody copies it uh, and we lose it. Uh, and that's happened in our experience. So we, we have to be very careful about what we share. Um, and so it's different when you're working with a pioneer in small lab, even though they may have the most value, and be most innovative uh, in some respects, important respects, uh, it's important to understand that we can't do that. Uh, so that's why I talk about general issues. And then we have NDAs with a lot of companies, a lot of organizations, so we're bound by what we can share. Number one, though, make sure you have those pioneers. Number two, it has to be an executable system-wide, network-wide, organization-wide system. So this is a problem that the DOD is still suffering. We were all brought up and trained on frameworks. Organiz before the network world occurred, before that revolution happened, uh, frameworks were ideal. That's why we're all educated early, and, and I train people on it. I use them, uh, still think in those terms. 
it's it's okay for understanding and communication. It's not okay for executable networks. You need to understand the the very specialist items, uh, the thousands of things that occur in a, in a network to be able to be executable, um, especially if you want to do it in an efficient manner. So those things have been thought through, and those problems have been solved by people uh, back to one, the pioneers in this in this area. But you need to have in any any event. You need to have a network-wide system. So there are a lot of corporations that are investing, in a few cases, billions of dollars. Uh, there's been a discussion recently, J.P. Morgan, for example, making the big transformation of bank, in banking, over $10 billion a year in their budget, and they're making a major transformation. There's insurance companies that are spending uh, in the single-digit billions of dollars a year, auto companies kind of in that, uh, that same lower level, billions of dollars a year, uh, autonomous vehicles investing heavily. Um, those are because it's viewed as existential risk. Now, of course, very few companies can invest that amount of money to make that transformation. And so that's where we come in. Regardless of whether you have the money or not, um, does it make sense to learn those lessons over yourself? And this is a problem today with understanding, on the, and it, it goes right to the adoption problem. Um, consulting firms are not generally right about this. It's true that in the 1990s in the commercialization of the network, uh, the, the web and the internet, the reason why uh, I created a, a internal incubator, it was a global incubator in a small lab, and we were a pioneer in that lean, fast fail movement. There was a handful of us in 96 doing that. The reason why we did it is because no one really understood anything. Um, and it was a new medium still. Most of the business models had been tried. The, the technology was very basic. It had some fundamental problems and uh, infrastructure. It didn't scale well. Um, so this was a, really a, a really good method to learn that. The problem is is that uh, the experiments, you experiment when you don't know what you're doing. It's very valuable for that. Uh, it has a good place for it. We continue to do it in those areas that are pioneering where we don't know what we're doing. But if there are things that you already understand, obviously in a critical system uh, environment, um, you don't need to experiment. You shouldn't be experimenting. It's a waste of money. So there's no reason to be starting at these, uh, at, at, at the way that uh, that most organizations are doing, that's a cultural issue. It's also a billable hour issue. The reason why companies are advising that is because it's easier to get uh, companies going on it, and they learn from it, start small, and then build and learn. Problem is, you don't have time for that now. You don't believe me? Go talk to J.P. Morgan. Uh, that's why they're spending over ten billion dollars a year. Uh, talk to the DOD. Uh, we, they're, they're on our list. They're, they're on our newsletter list. That's the message that we've been getting to them. Uh, many, many others. You don't have time to learn things that people have learned over decades. Um, it just doesn't exist. So this is, this is really important to understand. So uh, when you're talking about scaling out these networks, how do you, how do you populate? How do you pre-architect? Pre, uh, the data to optimize for AI systems and machine learning. How do you separate out machine learning to be able to, for the government system so that it's security? We hear a lot of things in the press right now, op-eds and things by people that don't understand these issues. And so there's a lot of fear. Well, we've been working on a long time. Those are, you can't overcome those problems. It's designed well and the system well and executed system. So those are the two areas that, that are overlapping um, that you need to get out there. Speed, very good. McKinsey, good work. Speed in the right direction. Speed in the wrong direction can be fatal. Um, we've seen that with uh, quite a few companies invested heavily, paid way too much for companies, what have you, um, and already are falling behind. Executives have changed. So these are really important issues. The adoption problem is not just in speed. It does include speed, but it's how you're adopting and how you're adopting is in part due to conflicting advice uh, that is better for the advice givers. In some cases, they may not understand themselves, uh, but uh, this is not a situation that, that works well uh, in 
learning to crawl before you walk, uh, because uh, uh, it's it it reminds me. I shared internally in a message recently. Reminds me of the movie Top Gun. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking of that. And and in the and they were on this aircraft carrier and they were in this battle, and the captain of the ship was saying, you know, get that guy out there, get him up in the air because other people are getting attacked. Um, and somebody said, well, how long is it going to take? There's something like, well, it's going to take five minutes. You know, this guy, and so the captain says, this thing will be over in two minutes. Well, the, this will be a permanent, as far as we can tell, uh, situation with AI systems from now on. Um, it is, and the speed is absolutely important because the rapid evolution taking place and machine learning and uh, innovation taking place. Uh, it, 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 getting that right, the speed in the right direction um, with the right systems, and that's a good example of the aircraft carrier and the fighters. Uh, good training, good systems, good communication, and speed all have to be executed flawlessly. That is especially true now that you're faced with adversaries, whether it's the DOD or corporations that are moving very fast, they're very well financed, uh, they have top people, and they're also moving on very good systems. So I will leave it at that, and uh, in reflection of Memorial Day, uh, I, I, I was thinking that the best way you can honor, we can honor, uh, those who have fallen on Memorial Day would be to prevent uh, war if we can, um, when we can, and uh, if we can't, then to protect them the individuals, the innocents, uh, and uh, with the, the fewest casualties po possible. Everybody I've ever known in the military, especially those that have been in battles, uh, they are the most peace-loving people you'll ever meet. Uh, they've seen war, they've seen how terrible it is, and they want to avoid it. The flip side is, it's not always possible. So uh, whether it be a corporate battle uh, or, or uh, war uh, or a... Uh, or a military battle where lives are on the line, healthcare lives are on the line every day, same concept applies there. Really have a responsibility as leaders to get this right. If we get it right, uh, the future looks very bright indeed. Um, we don't even want to consider what happens if we don't get it right. So I hope this helps. Take good care.